Assalamu alaikum and good morning. It's Monday morning and welcome to Morning Barakah. It's approaching the days in which Allah sent down the Bible to the Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. MashaAllah, the original scriptures of the words of Allah are amazing and truly a blessing. Absolutely, indeed, Brother Bilal. It's a very important time when we should not take for granted and get the most out of these spiritual nights. SubhanAllah, speaking of the holy books, we are blessed at our, our own brother Mustafa Ali with his beautiful recitations. Today he'll be reciting Surah Ibrahim. MashaAllah, can't wait for that. We also have brother Ibrahim Asari on the couch and he's going to be doing great daily du'as. And today's du'a will be recited for after Fajr Salah. And we also have sister du'a with spiritual upliftment from the Holy Quran. Really looking forward to that this morning. How to get rid of bad habits using inspiration from the Holy Quran. Excellent. And today we also have um, nutrition and health. Um, Brother Bilal will be in the kitchen discussing healthy facts with life coach and NLP practitioner Fahim Muhammad and Chef Ben. And it's always good to have a balanced diet in this holy month. Oh, that's true, that's true. In the month of Ramadan, we should be paying attention to our etiquette and, and fortunate for us, should I say, Sister Zara and Sister Masuma Jaffa will be discussing this in Ramadan etiquette. Today's topic is the Holy Quran and how we can make the most of the holy month of Ramadan using our holy book. Inshallah, I'm really looking forward to sitting down with Sister Masuma again. And even more than, than that, we have um, little Abbas and Essam, he's been up again. And he's, begun, he's going to share a daily hadith with us. Masha'Allah, that's so cute. Uh, bless you. And to end this fantastic show, before your morning prayer, we have our very own side, Masin Shah from Akran SOS on the couch with your questions and queries. I can't wait to see him today. The topic he has in store for us is sushi. It's quite fascinating, isn't it? A uh, mix of Muslim. I think it's Shia and Sunni. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's time for our morning Baraka competition details. You and a friend could win the chance to visit Imam Hussein and Abul Fazl Abbas. Peace and blessings be upon them for July 2018. For the competition details, stay tuned for Brother Ahmed. Do you want the chance to visit Imam al-Hussein and al Fadl Abbas, peace be upon them both? Well, you've come to the right place. Morning Baraka is giving away two free tickets to Karbala this July 2018. I am standing here with the Holy Shrine of Imam al-Hussein behind me to give you the chance to send your salutations to the Imam in person. The exclusive Morning Baraka competition is the chance for you and a friend to visit the Holy Shrine of Imam al-Hussein. For your chance to win, answer the following question. Name two names given to the holy land of Karbala in Iraq. We need your emails with your answer and details which include a telephone number, phone name and address. Entries are free of charge and closed by the 30th of June 2018. All entries after may not be accepted so please put your entries in before the deadline. To enter, you must be over the age of 18. Now it's the part of the time of the show which I really enjoy. Inshallah, we'll be listening. I'm listening to Brother Mustafa um, reciting Quran. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Alaykum Mustafa. As it's good to see you today, as always. Good to see you too, yeah. And I believe that you'll be reciting from uh, Surah Ibrahim, uh, Ayat yeah. 3 1 to 3 4. Correct, inshallah. Inshallah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل لعبادي الذين آمنوا Solace. 
وَسَخَّرَ لَكُمُ الشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ دَائِبَيْنِ وَسَخَّرَ لَكُمُ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ وَآتَاكُمْ صدق الله العلي العظيم ما شاء الله that was very beautiful a very beautiful recitation of the holy quran um, i enjoyed that so much and it's such a, a blessing and now we move on to the section of the dua with brother ibrahim assalamu alaikum brother how are you doing alaikum assalam alhamdulillah alhamdulillah how are you good alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. welcome good. to this show again good. thank good. you once again always um, a pleasure Inshallah, today we're going to be talking about dua after salah. Inshallah. Um, which is obviously something that we've discussed previously. It's very important to sort of remember to pray after pray, um, to make dua after praying. Um, if you'd like to give a bit of an explanation about the dua you're going to recite for us. Definitely. So t today, um, this specific dua, of course, there are many duas that are recommended to be recited after prayer. This being one of them. And possibly, of course, all du'as are beautiful, but possibly one of the most beautiful ones and one of my favorites just because of the things it mentions within. Mm -hmm. So inshallah, if I recite the Arabic first, then we can look at, look at the people Sorry. mentioned. Bismillah. Bismillah Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma adkhil ala ahli al-qubur al-surur. 
اللهم أغن كل فقير اللهم يشبع كل جائع اللهم اكس كل عريان اللهم اقض دين كل مدين اللهم فرج عن كل مكروب اللهم رد كل غريب اللهم فك كل أسير اللهم أصلح كل فاسد من أمور المسلمين اللهم اشفي كل مريض اللهم سد فقرنا بغناك اللهم غير سوء حالنا بحسن حالك اللهم اقض عنا الدين واغننا من الفاق إنك على كل شيء قدير وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد So of course the very first people it mentions is the inhabitants of the graves. So the very first thing is it is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh Allah grant them pleasure, grant them happiness for those who are within their graves. So the translation goes as follows oh Allah bring in pleasure to the inhabitants of the grave. Oh Allah enhance all the poor ones. Oh Allah satisfy all hungry ones. O oh Allah, provide all the naked with clothes. O oh Allah, help all, the, all, all those who are in debt by settling their debt. O oh Allah, relieve all the aggrieved ones. O oh Allah, help all the strangers to return home. O oh Allah, release all the prisoners. O oh Allah, rectify all the Muslims' affairs that are wrong. O oh Allah, heal all the ill ones. O oh Allah, fill in our poverty with your richness. O oh Allah, change our ill manners through your excellent manners. O oh Allah, help us settle our debts and save us from pov pro poverty. Verily, you have power over all things. And I think it's just beautiful. Yeah. You're starting off by making dua for all these people and then you relate it back to yourself straight after. Mm -hmm. Is this a dua that's recommended any time or is it particularly for the holy month of Ramadan? This is in fact a dua that is recommended to be recited after prayer generally and like we said within Ramadan just because of this, the blessing of this month um, there's just that extra thing to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know, everything just has that extra thing to it. Even, even prayer reciting Quran it always has the extra thing too, and I always say this. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to come here in front of the cameras and say, "Oh, do you know what?" No, no, no. When I come to to want to open the Quran when it's not Ramadan, it's hard. Mm. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's not as easy. Ramadan, I have that thing where it's like, "Do you know what? Yeah, I can open this Quran." Extra zeal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mashallah. Other than that, it's it's like, and the same thing goes with du'a. But this this du'a captured my imagination because it's in comparison to the others. There's a little twist on this one that is. Praying for others, praying for mm. others, praying for others, praying yeah. for others. Because, you know, sometimes we can become <coughs> absorbed. And Allah does say for us to ask for our needs. But, you know, sometimes we can become so absorbed in our own world yeah. and our own needs that we're praying for ourselves. We're praying for ourselves or just for our I family. Think it's the um, etiquette of Ahl Bayt, isn't mm. it? Mm. Mm. Lady Fatima used mm -hmm. to pray for everyone around before yeah. um, her own um, and then herself. And, and I think these it's showing the etiquette, isn't it? But think about all those people in need, and, and, a, and actually not just thinking about those, but think about how many do not have, and that we have, you know. And yeah. when you're looking yeah. at, you know, clothes those that are naked, well, alhamdulillah, we don't have, you know, yeah, in, in certainly where we live, yeah. um, you know, the poverty, you know, we have so much to be grateful for, and especially in this month. And, and I think one of the most beautiful things about this month is the unity. Mm. And it doesn't matter which school of thought you may belong to. But when you see other, so for instance, Muslims, um, so Muslim sisters, uh, we're quite obvious with our hijab, yeah. and you all know that we're all fasting, you know, and it's such a beautiful feeling that you're yeah, in definitely. this collective worship with Allah. 
there's yeah. real power in that collectivity. Yes. 100%, real power in that collectivity. 100%. I think other people, religions don't understand because a lot of other pe people of other faiths, you know, well, you know, Muslims fast, but there was fasting before the Quran was revealed. There's fasting before Muslims and stuff. I'm saying it's true. The Quran it's confirms that there was fasting before, but yeah. there's no religion I'm aware of now that's, you know, any revealed or, or, or any spiritual path where there's a collective fast for a month. There's nothing like that. And there the isn't. power is of all, is you can feel the spirituality in the society. You can 100%. feel it. Yeah, definitely, yeah. and especially when you go to Muslim countries, it's the, the feeling just intensifies. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you mm. mentioned you've been in Ramadan and Najaf. Well, it's just the beginning. We left just before, unfortunately. But oh, unfortunately, but I, I went, I went um, uh, two years ago, and I fasted the, the last ten days oh, in Najaf. So I got the istishad of Imam Ali. I was in Najaf, yeah. mm -hmm. and Layal al Qadr. I was in Najaf, and it was just beautiful. It was just something else. But you mentioned Fatima Zahra and how she used to always pray for others. From that, we get one time she, someone came to Fatima Zahra and they asked her, Oh, Fatima Zahra, why is it that you always pray for others? Why do you not pray for yourself? She said, Have you not heard the hadith from my father, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, in which he said, Your neighbor before yourself? Yeah. The teachings of Ahlul Bayt. Mm -hmm. Great mm -hmm. examples, great akhlaq. And of course, we see in the Quran, He had a great example in Rasulullah. Mm. Rasulullah used to always go for those in need, go do whatever he could, literally whatever he could, just to get to them before he gets to his own house. And the same was with Fatima Zahra. She gave away everything she had. There were, there were days where Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein wouldn't eat, yet mm -hmm. the poor ones would, would be eating. Because Fatima Zahra and Imam Ali used to always seek out to them. I think that's, that's very beautiful Massive, and we should take a yeah. great example from that. Definitely, because mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. in, the, in the societies we live in, we're um, promoted to think about, well, sort yourself out first mm -hmm. before thinking of others. Because, you know, the, you, you, you matter first. But actually, Ahl Bayt are giving us, you know, such pristine examples that think about the others around you. you know, and, and I think what you have between you and Allah is a secret, isn't it? Yeah. They wouldn't have announced that our children are hungry. Um, but it's an etiquette to us, isn't it, that, you know, these lessons? Do you know what? It tends to work better in society as well, I see. Why? Because if everyone's thinking about themselves, the poor ones, who's going to help them? Mm -hmm. there's, there's no such thing as there, is, there can't be a poor one. There, there isn't such a thing. There's always going to be someone who's yeah. poor. Yeah. Somebody has to have, by definition, less. Yeah. 100%. So who's going to be there for, yeah. their, for their aid? Me, myself, let's say, as an example, I'm very well off right now. But in a few days' time, how do, I, how, how do I not know I'm going to get stuff things, coming things in? Change, left, right, change, center, I'm, things I'm change, things change, yeah. I don't have anything. I'm going to need aid. Now, I'm, I'm not going to be, the, maybe I'm not going to have the, the um, health to stand up for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, often, I mean, we have Masha such good um, homeless, feeding the homeless drives in London. Yeah. And um, I remember reading an article about um, a homeless person in London <coughs> um, that one of the national newspapers had run. And they said, well, how did you get to this state? He said... Um, you know, his everything just fell apart. His relationship fell apart. His motivation for work fell apart. He was an educated person, had a very good job. And suddenly he found himself like not having the will to live. And he said, I gave everything up because mm. things just, you know, like a domino effect broke. And there he was on the streets. And this wasn't somebody that was, you know, scrounging on drugs and, you know, had a, a, an awful upbringing. We just don't know what's, yeah. what tomorrow may bring, right? We yeah. just don't 100%. know. Just like people that are not, they say um, the believer shouldn't be hopeless because even if you're in a tight jam or a difficult situation you don't know what Allah has got no. for you yeah. you know to change that situation to elevate you and likewise you know those who are fortunate we should just be humble and not be arrogant because that can be removed by yeah. circumstances that we just Absolutely. don't know Definitely. nothing is written yeah. forever is it and, mm -hmm. and often when you see people in difficult circumstances they're you know, even when we're saying, okay, fasting is difficult, it's not easy to be hungry for, you know, however many, 18, 19 hours. But the, the willpower that we grow from it, mm. you know, the resistance, mm. resilience we, we develop, it's, it's amazing how much actually power yeah. human beings have if Definitely. the mind is in control. Of and them. you mentioned Ramadan and, and fasting. The thing is, um, one of the purposes of fasting is to actually feel the hunger of, of the poor ones. It's to actually feel the thirst of those of those who don't have anything to drink exactly so then yeah. when you come and then you're you're in that state where you feel what someone else is feeling yet with that you are making dua for all those who are in need it just adds that spirituality effect yeah and i think exactly. we've been talking about that every single episode the spirituality we gain effect. some insight yeah of the less Definitely. fortunate at least Definitely. some
Inshallah, unfortunately, that's all we've come, come to the end of the show. Like it's it's going, so quick. Literally that was very quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just think from the dua that you recited that something that we can sort of magnify in this month is perhaps to think about the ones that are less needy and, and you know, perhaps elevate ourselves by helping inshallah, others. Amen. Inshallah. Um, inshallah, another episode, inshallah, we'll see you. Inshallah, Keep us in your du'as. Inshallah, likewise. Thank you so much. And next up, we have... Um, Dua Maksumi discussing bad habits and baraka pearls. Assalamu alaikum. I am Dua Maksumi, and I'm here sh to show you how the Holy Quran can improve your life. Let's talk about the bad habits. We all have bad habits, but they're not haram to do in the month of Ramadan. And why can Ramadan help us combat and break the bad habits? How can both the fasting side and the spiritual side help? bad habits. Well, let's talk about our bad habits. For example, sometimes you like to watch a lot of video games or play a lot of video games, watching too much movies or too much YouTubers or going out, dining out in a shisha calf. They're not haram. But in the holy month of Ramadan, it's not spiritual. It doesn't help your spiritual soul. The month of Ramadan is a blessed month in which one must connect together with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by listening to Quran, by reading duha iftitah after the iftar, by sitting with family, connecting with relatives, doing salat raham. It's more important than locking up yourself in the room and watching video games all day or watching movies, even though it's not haram to do it in the month of Ramadan, but it's considered as a bad, ha bad habit. Ramadan can help combat bad habits like those that I mentioned because we realize that we change a lot in Ramadan. Instead of us listening to music, we would listen to more of Quran. Instead of us being outside all the time, we'd enjoy our family. So it helps us connect with family, with leaving your bad habits, to listen to more Quran, to connect yourself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By the time the month of Ramadan ends, you're used to the spiritual thing that you're you do on your daily basis, you get you miss reading Quran, you miss hearing supplications and du'as. So instead of me being in my room playing video games and watching YouTube all the time, I would be like, I want to sit with my family. I should read a little bit of Quran because I got used to it in the month of Ramadan. So bad habits can help in the month of Ramadan because slowly, slowly you'll get used to in changing those bad habits. For example, you'd have something like anger management. We all have anger management, but in the month of Ramadan, it's not really spiritual to be angry and have bad manners and akhlaq. So what does the month of Ramadan do? When you're fasting, it helps you to be patient and to control your anger. And when the month of Ramadan is complete and it's done, you will get into the habit of being used to being patient and calm. That being said, Having those bad habits are not recommended in Islam. So take your notebook out and sit down and list down the bad habits that you have and try to avoid doing them on day-to-day -day basis in the month of Ramadan until you practice how to live your life without bad habits and you would accomplish a goal. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, Man tasawa yawma fahuwa maghboon. Whose days are equal are a loser. وَمَنْ كَانَ أَمْسُهُ أَفْضَلَ مِنْ يَوْمِهِ And those who their today is worse than their yesterday is curse. So we should always change our bad habits and not go to the minus. We should always change ourselves and not be like how we were yesterday. Ramadan Mubarak wa taqabbala Allahu a'malakum. Nutrition and health. I have with me today Sister Fahima Muhammad. Salaamu alaikum. My NLP coach. Life coach, NLP practitioner, yes. and Ben the chef. Hello. Yeah. You're not cooking today, Ben. It doesn't look I'm like you're cooking, cooking today. today. It's but my, it's, what it's what my do you have in store for? We have got us. a beautiful, gorgeous salad to to prepare for everyone. Uh, it's really just to showcase the sort of nutrients that you need uh, over the fasting period, and um, yeah, just making sure you get everything that you could possibly need uh, to keep you going. What's it called? This is a Mixed leaf, um, boiled egg, tomato and radish salad. I love the ingredients already. Yeah. Interesting. Um, the fact that I can see spinach over there, and a lot of the times uh, we have spinach that is cooked. So this is an opportunity to yeah. have yeah. it. Raw spinach. Raw this spinach. is this is baby spinach. Does it differ? Spinach. Does it differ? There's, there's yeah, different, I mean, yeah. a lot of 
the time when we're going to cook our ingredients, it's going to obviously take away a lot of the, you know, the health and nutrition in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is a good opportunity to have your, you know, your greens. And also it contains a lot more of the water that we require to keep ah, us hydrated. Ah, the hydration, because yeah. yes. it's always an issue as exactly. we're fasting in Ramadan, we're fasting, it's always an issue. It's something light, it's easy, as well as the fact that we can have it in the morning if you fancy. Mm -hmm. It's not everyone's taste, but a lot of, you know, for the evening as well, alongside your main meal. It's a really good dish, but this one, because it's got eggs in there, it's very high in protein, yeah. and it could be taken as, as a full meal if some days you don't feel like having, because as Ramadan goes along, and the days, your tummy yeah. gets a little bit smaller, yeah, yeah, and yes. your intake yeah, is a little bit less. Yeah. So this is oh, a we really hope that for, we, we're, we're hoping, it depends. <laughs> we're hoping. For <laughs> some, it, some you us. do know for some, it increases. You <laughs> know. Course, but that also does, really, that's a really interesting point, because I think a lot of us, because we stick to the traditional foods, Yeah. And that is not actually beneficial for us at all. It increases... So easy on the grease, yes. guys. Easy, easy on, on the grease. It. That is it. Definitely. So we can start so, by, yeah, you know, we're just going to start Start with the leaves. Just got some, some lettuce here. Fantastic vegetable for salads. I love green. I love green. I love green. I can't get enough green. Um, raw foods, there's a kind of raw food movement that's going on yes. these days, being promoted more and more now. and more. As people yes. were going more vegan, I'm not necessarily, not necessarily promoting any veganism, but just saying that as people go more, yep. uh, more Absolutely. into the less animal product foods and, and more vegetable based foods, is raw food diet. Do you know anything about this? It's whole raw food movement, well, alkaline versus acidic foods yeah, and this type of thing. Um, and also the practical reasons for it. I mean, I personally like to be as quick as, you know, if, if I want to be in the kitchen. So having it raw is less preparation, less time. And yep. obviously it holds more, more of the nutrition in there. Okay, okay. And, you know, it always has been, you know, um, basically uh, research have shown that it's better for you to have raw foods. But as research goes along as well, we realize that, um, you know, it has changed with our concept, especially with eggs. It used to be something that we shouldn't have mm -hmm. or have only the whites or, you know, not the yellow, whichever way. But cholesterol, now, good cholesterol, yes. bad cholesterol. But it depends because the cholesterol does not necessarily, um, you know, raise in the blood. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's fine for us to continue to have yeah, that now. Yeah. And so with new research all the time, always keep yourself updated. Don't just go with the information that you learned before. And that's a really good way of, you know, sort of increasing... To involve intellectually, right? Yes. We gotta, we gotta we involve. Have to yeah, involve, involve. absolutely. And research is, you know, proving to show us that there is changes in everything, mm -hmm. especially in our food and diet. Mm -hmm. So we need to be up to date with that to realize that there are certain absolutely. things that we can have. Absolutely. And we should have, and it will actually increase us, you know, in our likelihood of actually eating better and fresher and opening up our palates to mm -hmm. even, you know, things that we wouldn't normally have. Because there's always that fear for some people when they hear cholesterol, they think, okay, um, you know, heart disease because of the, yes. the effect that some cholesterol will have building up in the arteries and, you know, the, making blood pressure irregular, right? So, but there's yeah. good, very I mean, good cholesterol eggs, to, to kind of challenge that. Eggs at one point were considered very bad for cholesterol. If you eat too many eggs or every day, it was yeah. considered quite bad. Now it's not the case. There's, there's new studies that have come exactly. out and um, it's, it's not so bad for you. It's, it's, mm -hmm. actually, it's actually a great, good for you. A great food, a great yeah. food to eat. And as humans, we evolve. We are changing ourselves all the time mm -hmm. and our bodies are changing, you know, so we need to know, you know, what's happening around us and how our food is being prepared, how yes. it's actually being grown. And all of these things do take effect as to what we put inside ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, that sort of knowledge, I think we always have to be, you know, up to date with and give ourselves, you know, the time to take that, you know, sort of extra step. To yeah. research. I can't help watching Ben your technique with the, uh, <laughs> with the, with the knife. You're getting the most out of that right. <laughs> Waste <laughs> not, what not, you know? Yeah, and you're not serving but up any chunks. Like no, it, no, hunks. No, no. Yeah. yeah, and actually, if certain pl uh, uh, ingredients are not necessarily your favorite, in order to have it cut in a thin way, yeah, it makes it dissolve. easily, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. I mean, guys at home, if you've got a mandolin, a mandolin would, uh, would be great here. If, if your knife skills aren't, aren't great, you can just. But try, not to, uh, but try not to mandolin half of your thumb off. Yes, be careful, guys, be careful. But, um, yeah, so simple, right? Yeah. And yeah. just packed full of flavour and nutrients. I mean, this raw thing. If, if you're, anyone who's cooked carrots before, what happens when, when you take the carrots out? What does the water look like? It's orange, isn't it? Yes. So that's that's half of the nutrition that's, going away. That's good uh, vitamins and minerals that are just being left behind. You're going to throw that away, right? So... So try and stick to, yes. the, to the raw foods. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But just remember when salads, obviously when we're going to garnish it and we're going to have, you know, sort of like the dressing, mm -hmm. you know, cut down a little bit of your salt because obviously that's going to yep. make you feel a bit thirsty. So, you know, try maybe having a little bit extra, maybe, I don't know, lemon if you wanted, a bit of olive oil and you've got some uh -huh. vinegar yes. there, I see. 
which is actually very good for you too. So all of these things is something to consider when you're fasting especially. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So um, it will not actually you know, dry your palate too quickly and make you feel thirsty throughout <coughs> the day. And that's just with food in general, but obviously we do add you yeah. know, salt and pepper or whatever it may be in our foods. Is it, it feels like a, a kind of a, a, a payoff, you know, you, you kind of um, cost benefit because you know, the more seasoning there is, the more tasty the food is, but that means possibly more salt mm -hmm. and exactly. more drying out. Exactly. And you want to be able to taste the ingredients as well. You don't want to mask the, the beautiful ingredients that, you, that you've got. Yes, because, you know, there's some things like salt or even other uh, sort of like uh, balsamic vinegar, you know, can be overpowering. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we yeah. need to obviously, you know, check that before we actually... Balance. It's it. all about balance. It's all about balance. Yeah. So okay, here comes the spinach, yeah. here comes the superfood. Now we're adding the flavour. We've got, we've got beautiful ingredients here, but we're going to sort of make them even better with uh, this little dressing that I've made. It's just vinegar and oil. There's no need to... That's olive oil we're having in yep, there, right? vinegar and okay. olive oil. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no need to jazz it up. You know, just simple, simple dressing. I love the colours of that as well. That's yeah, it. It's got a vibration yes. to it. It has a it's vibration. It's summer. It's really healthy. It's quite filling. That's it. You put vinegar in there. I think there's, is there something about um, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, talking about the benefits of vinegar? The, or the, or um, anything you know about it helping digestion in general? Well, it does help in digestion, but also everything within balance because we need to know our body so that we make sure that whatever we have is in keep with us. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no point even saying general, you know, information about this is good or this is not good. Because like I said, we have to study our bodies first, mm -hmm. know ourselves, and that's why it's highly recommended to know your body type and what it is that's good for you. Because when we're even giving this kind of information, really it's for you to go out there at home and search for yourself, yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, um, that's what people always get confused of. And that's why things don't work for them. Because they're using general information, which doesn't work for not them. Not made to measure, it's not, not made, tailored, exactly. not tailored not for tailored. themselves. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So yes. I always generalize and I say, if I'm going to you know, coach a client one-to-one, -one, then we do individual research and work with regards to their body type, their weight, what exactly it is that they're doing and using what's in their, their diet. What's their goals, XYZ? What is their goal? Yeah, you know, what's yeah. their trigger? What, what's happening in their daily routine? And that's an individual sort of requirement. Okay, so you're taking in lifestyle into consideration yes. and also people's in, in, intolerance to food, of dislike course. to food, or people's Absolutely. aversion to food, because I guess all those things differ, right? Yes. Yeah. And our cultures do come into play because we're so used to the same types of food, we're so used to the same sort of ways of doing things, and a lot of it is really not healthy. So we need to sort of open up our minds a little bit more of the foods that, you know, is for us, mm -hmm. regardless of where we come from. Are you, are you, do you encounter resistance then, or people kind of like an unwillingness or... Well, it's not so uh, not unwillingness, or a, a slight fear of it's stepping into really, the unknown? It's not really as resistance, but it's the fact that, you know, people are not willing to change. They're not willing mm -hmm. to open up to new ideas, because if they're going to attend a family occasion, if they're going to certain restaurants, it's always the same. And unfortunately, it's not healthy. Mm -hmm. and especially when there's loads of people, they just think they've just got to fill the whole table up with everything and not necessarily, most of it's not healthy. And it's not actually giving yep. them anything. And mm -hmm. in Ramadan, we have this a lot. And you feel bloated, you feel tired. So at the same time, you know, we, mm -hmm. need, to, we, able, we need to be able to worship better. We need to be able to move better. And how can we do this? It, our food helps with that. Mm -hmm. That intake mm -hmm. in our body gives mm -hmm. us, you know, not just metabolism, it gives us energy, it gives us even the thought in our brains in order to be able to, you know, So you, 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 you're better. one of those who believe that food can help with concentration or state Absolutely. of mind. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of research yeah. that shows that. And even just generally fasting, we don't even address the fact that a lot of people find it really difficult, but fasting is such a good benefit for us in so many ways. A lot of athletes do that. A lot of sick patients, even though, will fast into, you know, intermittently mm -hmm. because they feel that it will help their body detox or even mm -hmm. just help with their, their mm -hmm. balance just generally in life. So, you know, we've got to know these advantages so that we actually do drive ourselves to actually make the benefit, you know, mm -hmm. to its, you know, to the limit. Mm -hmm. Ben, are there other yes. salads that you can combine, create, um, I don't know, put together that is good for Sahor for the, you know? Something that put something rich in the engine that won't bloat you. Yeah. This is a thing saying that that won't bloat you, but it will help you the next day when you are engaged in a fast. Absolutely. I mean, the name of the game with this one is um, replenishing your your water and uh, getting that those minerals and, and vitamins. Um, so do your research. There's so many great superfoods out there like beetroot, um, avocado, as we had in in one of our other episodes. They're just Absolute superfoods. Mm -hmm. If you eat one of those a day, you're, mm -hmm. you're going to be you're going to be laughing. So, 
Yes. You can even have like kidney beans and lentils and things like yes. that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Pulse of so the pulses. Yeah. Yeah, now you're entering exactly. the pulses. And it's yes. actually filling and it's extra really tasty. Protein. Yeah. Extra protein. Yeah. It's so amazing. Food is such an amazing thing. But people, you know, because of the lack of knowledge or education, just generally awareness around it, it could really deter you from actually creating something that's going to be so fulfilling for you. Yeah, food and tends to be such a social thing. You mentioned culture earlier, yes. but food tends to be such a social thing. So yes, it is. It is uh, people need that extra encouragement of to course. break away yes. and try something new, right? Get away from the norm, try something new and, you know, open up a different lens. And like I said, you know, it will not just help your body, it will help your mind, it will help your movement generally. And we need to obviously, you know, do so much in this day and age. So, you know, what better way than this? And there's so much processed food, there's so much, you know, ready-made mm -hmm. foods mm -hmm. that's around. Mm -hmm. That's packed and with salt. Yeah, this is the why, this point of this program is to show it's quick and easy, it's simple, and it's most importantly healthy and nutritional. So, you know, so this was fast food. Possible. This was fast <laughs> this food. Is it's a real fast food. Real With fast a twist, food. Yeah. it's actually healthy for you, you know? Yeah. That's what you want. Fast wow. as in quick. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. But yes. not fast as in um, yeah. full the with cheap, way. unhealthy yes. ingredients. Yes. That's it. Process. I mean, this in itself is, is a great side dish, you know? But add some, add some chicken to it. That's true. Uh, add some other proteins to it. And you've got, you've got a main meal there. And with, how long did that take? Exactly. Mm -hmm. A couple of minutes, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, you know, when you're tired, you, you come home. That's, you don't want to be faffing around cooking yeah, this, that, yeah, and the other. Yeah, you just yeah. want to keep it simple. And and, and it looks so colourful because I know that there's going to be uh, mums with young children out there and, you know, there's always a bit of a struggle to get them to eat <laughs> their greens. But this, this, I mean, this looks a bit appealing. I mean, can you say a little bit about um, how you work with mums? in terms of in working with children and stuff like that? Well, because, you know, children, are, 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 they can be a, a kind of law unto themselves. Of or, course. You know, it's they can be challenging. Trying, yeah, it's trying to uh, manage their mindset and trying to have them think that even if they don't like it, try it again. Because, yeah. like I said, our palate changes over time. Mm -hmm. And if you are trying something as well, that actually helps. Because a lot of time we cook for our kids and we don't eat it ourselves. And they do have a different way, uh, you know, each child does differ. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. and we tend to try and cater for each one. But you know what? There's one meal. You got to, this is what's cooked today, and this is what needs to be eaten. Otherwise, there's going to be nothing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. you've got to be a little bit tough, mm -hmm. and you've got to show them that this is how it's done. We cannot cater individually. We're not restaurants, and we don't have the time for that. Yeah. So, yeah. but, you know, it's not practical. That's not practical. It's not practical. It's not, it's not actually a good way as well to actually teach children that this is what's available, this is what's good for you, and this is how we need to sort of look at things and just try sometimes they just say no because they just don't know you know at least get them to put it in their mouth yeah yeah, yeah. and that sometimes can actually be the winner itself to actually get them to actually eat it to actually like it and you can do it again yeah so there's yeah, many yeah, variations yeah, yeah. and obviously it does differ from client to client or from whoever it may be mums or you know, even ourselves we ourselves yeah. are so resistant so we need to look at ourselves first and we're the best of teachers we need to be the role models yeah. and we need to carry that forward mm -hmm. and the truth of the matter is even to this day for myself i eat carrots i don't particularly like carrots but my mum well i'm not going to waste her money and it's not going to happen in terms of wasting yes. their ingredients i mean carrots were served Mm -hmm. And carrots were enjoyed. That's it. Whether That's I enjoyed it. them or not, of they course, were good for me. What you instill from a young age as well, regardless, it will you will something that you'll remember, you know, in a lifetime. We're habitual creatures, as Definitely. they say. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In, in good, in a good way, that could be good. And some other we get good habits. habits. We need to yeah. Change. So we, 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 we <laughs> yeah. I think that that is a perfect takeaway message to to, to instill and keep um, instill those uh, good, good habits. habits. They're good. So we, up next, we have Ramadan etiquette with Sister Masuma Jaffa. Quran Ramadan. Thank you, Brother Bilal, for that episode on um, healthy fats. Interesting um, discussion and um, seeing the outcome of the food. Um, so now we have our Ramadan etiquette, and um, alhamdulillah, we have Sister Basuma Jaffa joining us once again. Assalamu alaikum. How is your fasting going? Alhamdulillah, good. Good, good, good. I'm sure, mashallah, inshallah, God is blessing you with lots of uh, baraka. Um, and thank you for joining us on these busy nights. Obviously, everyone has hectic lives. And um, so t today we're going to be speaking about um, the importance of reciting Quran and why we recite it and the um, benefits we get from it. So um, firstly, why should somebody recite Quran? Because they are the words of Allah. Mm -hmm. It's the only thing that we know 100% are, is actually authentic. These are the words of Allah, not changed at all. Mm -hmm. So much so that when God tells the Holy Prophet, you know, say, he actually mm -hmm. says, say. So mm -hmm. he says it word perfect. It's, mm -hmm. it's not even being changed even that little bit. Um, and if I love 
Allah, mm. I would want to know what he says. It is a book of guidance for us. It is a book that allows me to connect to my creator. And the peace that I feel when I'm reciting it, mm. it's unbelievable. So really beneficial to your soul, yeah. guidance, um, lessons in life. And often that actually people will say, um, yes, the Quran is 1400 years ago. Yes, there are lessons from the prophets. They don't apply to us. And, um, and that's quite interesting, I find, because often you will see the ramifications still in, in our lives today. So the stories of Prophet Yusuf, mm. the betrayal of the families and, you know, and, and how Prophet Yunus has that separation, you know, all these things, you know, we have. Yeah, for um, sure. There's so many things that we can actually relate to, can't we? Um, so in this holy month, somebody can't do, like obviously it's recommended to do the whole Qur'an and mashallah, some people can even recite more than one mm. once they do it. Um, what are the spiritual benefits of, you know, even reciting one verse? So we have hadith that says that, you know, in this month, mm -hmm. one if you recite one verse, it is um, as if you recited the whole Qur'an. Wow, so what a mercy. Can you imagine? Yeah. It's like, why wouldn't you want to just Absolutely. take time out to recite it? But I think, you know, um, also, you know, life does go on. Mm. People can't sort of take the whole month off. So don't beat yourself up, up about it. Maybe use this as a way um, of bringing the family together. Mm. So maybe sort of between the, all the family members recite the whole Quran rather than reciting on my own. That's my shot so if you've got nice, five yeah. people in the family, mm. you can all do six Jews each, and that's doable that's if you're lovely. working and things. Mm. So you know, you're not only connecting to Allah, but you're connecting with the family as well to Allah. Mm. And I think that's beautiful. When you, when you worship together as a family, it brings you closer together as a family. Definitely, yeah. That's, such a, that's a beautiful recommendation to not feel that you have to. Um, and so for those that are... Arabic isn't their mother tongue. How would, is it okay to just recite the Arabic or should we be reading the translation as well? How would you recommend? So the Quran is only the Quran in Arabic. Yeah. Um, so it, it's really important that we do actually recite the Holy Quran in Arabic. But obviously it's a book of guidance. Mm. And if I don't understand what it's telling me, then how can it guide me? So it's really important that I not only recite it, but I reflect on it because Allah constantly is telling us in the Holy Quran, why do they not reflect? So I don't yeah. want to be one of those who does not reflect. Um, and reflection is not tafsir. A lot of people are scared to reflect because mm. they think it's doing tafsir of the Holy Quran and we don't have the knowledge to do tafsir. Right. Mm. In fact, there's a hadith from the Holy Prophet which says that you know, if uh, someone does tafsir from their own self with no knowledge or anything, then there will be a seat um, reserved for them in, in the fire of hell. But wow. reflection is not tafsir, and mm. I think that's really, mm. really important to understand. Reflection is where I look at, I, I read a verse, I look at its translation if I don't know the Arabic, mm. and I just contemplate on what God is telling me personally. To build that relationship then with God, yeah. personally. And, and, and the beauty of it is, mm. because the Quran directly talks to each one of us, mm. um, dependent on our situation, that same verse, when I look at it today and reflect on, will have a different meaning to when I look at it maybe in a year's time or in 10 days' time when my situation has changed. SubhanAllah, it's so true, isn't it? Yeah. And it's so beautiful, but we don't get, you know, we don't no. get that benefit because we don't, we just, we're so focused on reciting, and reciting is a good thing. I'm not saying it's not, it's not yeah. a good thing. It's a very important thing, but that should not be our only focus. Mm. We should reflect. And then also, in order to actually understand the deeper meaning, actually look at the tafsir that we have, which have been written by the scholars who have knowledge. Mm. So it's really important. And I suggest that we do the reflection before the tafsir, because when we do the reflection after the tafsir, then it guides us, it narrows down our reflection, because now we think we have to think this way. Right. Whereas it's you need more, to expand your... Yeah, so just, just allow the Quran to talk to you, mm. talk to your heart, talk to your soul not go into the Qur'an with any preconceived ideas, with no sort of, you know, this is what I believe and therefore the Qur'an is, should, you know, mm. um, give me proof to that. Rather just just allow it to talk to you. But I think it sounds like the, the prerequisite of it really to um, speak to your soul and your heart. It's the, it's the clearance of your heart, the sincerity, yeah. the genuine communication you want Allah to yes. speak to you. Exactly. Um, because otherwise if, you know, you could hear, I could just imagine people you know, you've obviously written awful things about, you know, 
when I was thinking about Salman Rushdie's book, that they want to misinterpret something, they can actually come up with something yeah. very, very yeah. deviated. And then the Quran itself says that those who have perversity in their hearts, yeah. the Quran will actually increase the perversity. Yeah. Yeah. So if you go in with preconceived ideas, yeah. then yes, it will actually, it won't benefit you. Mm. It's, it's a matter of allowing Allah to talk to you through his words. And I think it's so beautiful what you said, because I think some people may think, well, am I worthy of God talking to me? What have I done? And yet, he says, call upon me and yeah. I will answer you. But it, and it, that's what you're saying, isn't and, and, it? And that? I think, you know, the sad thing is, you know, when we have the Quran, we treat it with respect and of course we should. Yeah. But it's not disrespectful for me to make notes. Yeah. It's not disrespectful for me to put like, you know, my sort of sticky, sticky notes yeah. where I actually make, because that's me using it. Absolutely. If, if, you know, if a Quran looks used, then that means it's actually, I've taken it on and I've, I've you know, it's like, if you have a letter that's been sent to you by your beloved, um, you know, you know, yeah. you keep opening it, you yeah. keep reading it, and it will look used. It won't look, you know, like a lot of us, we just keep the Quran on, on the top shelf, and you know, we're so concerned about respecting mm. it that we don't actually use it. Using it is not yeah. disrespect. If, if anything, not using it is disrespect. Absolutely. I, I remember um, going on Ziara once, and there's. Um, um, lovely sister who, mashallah, teaches, you know, the Zawar and she had brought along her uh, Quran and it had so many sticky notes in it and all these pages and I just sat in awe thinking, mashallah, you know, her relationship, yeah. you could tell just by the sticky notes. And you think, subhanAllah, how Allah, you know, puts a light in people's heart to, to enable them to open up and actually, you know, receive that guidance mm. from Allah. Um, so we've got the holy nights coming up, um, Layla the Qadr. So one of the most important things to do is to sit and ref the reflection of the, because obviously we're told reflect. So would you say best one of the best deeds would be to recite maybe Quran and reflect upon those verses? It, it is a very highly recommended um, deed to do. Um, again, we've been given specific surahs for mm. those nights. Right. So we have Surah Ankabut, Surah Rum, Surah Dukhan. So maybe before the nights, if mm -hmm. we can actually look at the translation of those surahs, reflect on them, sure. look at the tafsir of those surahs, there's a lot of commonality between the three surahs. Mm. So again, you know, there's a specific reason those, those three surahs have been chosen, because the whole of the Qur'an is beautiful. Every surah in the Qur'an Could you elaborate on that point, just for our viewers, in terms of, to say, somebody doesn't understand, but how are they connected? How would you, in your well, sort of understanding? So there's lots of, I mean, like, for example, all three surahs talk about the signs of Allah, mm -hmm. and, you know, how we should reflect on the signs of Allah, because that will bring us closer to him. They all talk about um, the difference between a believer and an unbeliever. Mm. So there's lots of different different things. And again, each one has its own separate message. So for mm. example, Surah Al Kabud talks about um, you know, the, the spider's web and how much time he spends making that, but how fragile it is. Mm. And again, it brings it back to our life. How much time do we spend in this yeah. world, you know, making our lives for this world? And yet it's all gonna go. It's gonna go. So you know, when we die, yeah. none of this matters. It's mm. what we take on to the next world that mm. matters. So, you know, Surah Rum, which talks about, you know, the, the prophecy of the Romans defeating the Persians, no one thought at that time that would happen. So again, even though we think something's not, never going to happen, it's, un yeah. Yeah, it's impossible, God can make it happen. Yeah. So, you know, the, even the, the specific um, uh, messages that are in those surahs, the commonality that are in those surahs, there's so much to learn from it. It's just literally just sitting there and just making your notes on these surahs mm. so that you're actually prepared for this. This is the most important night. The night of Laylatul Qadr is the most important night of your whole year. Why would we not prepare? Mm. You know, and no guarantee for next year, is there? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, exactly. No people who were with us last year and you know, And it's year. not even that the fact that you know, we, it, it's, it's preparation for someone else. It's preparation mm. for my own self. Mm. I have a say in my destiny for that year. Yeah. God's allowing me to have a say why would I not want to have that say? Yeah. And the, the more best. I connect to the Quran, the more I connect to Allah, because it's through His words that I'll connect to Him, I'll understand Him more, I'll understand what um, is m what He requires from me for my own self. Right. So it's not even the requirement He wants because He benefits, but because yeah. for my own self, yeah. for me to reach my potential, my perfection, so that when I actually meet Him, you know, I'm ready for that I'm meeting. I'm the best version I can be exactly. of myself. So, so you've said, Masha, brilliant advice. Before the nights of Qadr, read those surahs and prepare. And Surah Qadr as well, obviously, to understand yeah. the benefit of this night. And benefit and then learn, um, absorb perhaps what the messages are so that on the night, 
one of the most um, recommended um, acts of worship are to recite those so I actually sit and recite those if we can but you're now when you're reciting it you're reciting it with understanding with, understanding, yeah. with a much deeper understanding having reflected on those mm. because again we've got to remember that the, the nights are really really short yeah so we you know we've got to ensure that we get the maximum out of these nights so if I sit there and try to look at the translation on the night right. yeah you're not going to yeah. have time unless you're on the other side of the world and obviously <laughs> have a benefit of a, exactly. of a longer night. So, and then also as the Qadr nights go, then we've still got the seven days or, you know, have the even days that we know some people do much of ten, the all odd nights and they're doing mm -hmm. the Badr. But we've still got to carry that on, haven't we? Yes. So what would be your tips as a final message to sort of... I think it's beautiful how God's put the night of Qadr on... Um, not at the beginning of the month mm -hmm. where you think you know you're, you're, you're the strongest because you're not weak you have just started fasting because it's not about the body it's about the soul mm -hmm. okay and usually when you think about like an exam it's at the end of the year so it's not at the end of the month so true yeah okay it's actually coming towards the end but you have the sort of seven nights mm -hmm. after it okay mm -hmm. and I've been thinking about this and reflecting on it and I think it's beautiful because by the time you've gone sort of three quarters into the month your soul is, is, is spiritually, you know, yeah. stronger, it's more connected to Allah, so you're ready for this amazing night, okay? Mm -hmm. Once you've had this amazing night where you've actually thought about what you want f going forward, mm. and you make resolutions, and it's about reconnecting to Allah, um, re-evaluating your life, prioritizing things, making sort of uh, resolutions on what you're going to do, then you have the seven nights in order to implement those resolutions, right bring them into your life so you can see how it's brought in because you're still in the month of Ramadan. Yeah. So you're still, you know, you've still got the bark of the month. You've still got shaitan locked up. You're still on that training ground where, yeah. you know, there's, it's much easier to implement those changes. Then, because you've implemented them in the first, in those seven nights, mm -hmm. then you can continue once the holy month finishes because now it's easier to continue something you've already started rather than trying to start it. Yes when the holy month isn't there. Yeah, so make it habitual and then yeah. inshallah we continue after the holy month. Inshallah. Thank you so much once again, time's flown by. Thank and, you. And um, I've really benefited and inshallah so have our viewers. Thank inshallah. you so much once again. And inshallah we will see you soon. Inshallah, thank um, you. And next up we have our own little Abbas. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> um, and here's Zimri giving us a uh, daily hadith. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Abbas and I'm here to bring you the daily hadith from Ahl al-Bayt, peace be upon them. Which month is the best month and which days are the best days? Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said the best month is the month of Ramadan and the, and the heart of month of Ramadan is the night of Ghadr. But what does it mean? Well, it means that Ramadan and the night of Ghadr is the most important time of the year. So make the most out of it. See you again, inshallah. Morning, Barakah. Ramadan special. You, fiqh and your questions answered with the Sayyid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you doing, sir? Alhamdulillah. Can't complain. How are you? Good, good. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Thank you and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me again. You're welcome. I came on an empty stomach this time. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make sure you can have some sandwiches. <laughs> if we have time, if there's time. Um, <laughs> so we have a question. Go ahead. And it's from a young adult. Um, when approaching the time for iftar, me and my parents have arguments because the Shia and Sunnis break their fast at different times. Mm -hmm. I have converted to Shia Islam and my parents are still Sunnis. Should I break my fast with them or shall I do it at the time stipulated for the Shias? I don't want my fast to be void. This uh, issue does come across uh, quite a lot, especially with, um, you know, when we have a congregation of Sunni and Shia together, mm -hmm. especially for the re reverts, I know it's, it's a bit of an issue. And also, you know, when friends get together and they want to do iftar together or even pray together, mm -hmm. uh, the timing. It's the, never so apparent than it is in this holy moment. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, Ihqam wise, you are not allowed to open your fast a minute before Maghrib Adhan. So, in this situation, I'm afraid not, you can't open your fast with uh, the par your parents and you'd have to wait until you know, Maghrib Adhan to open your fast. However, your parents should be understanding, your parents should be accommodating 
and it's only 15 minutes. Like, it's not a big gap. It's not like an hour, two hours or so. It's only, you know, a couple of Some minutes. Some people would say it is when you're hungry. Definitely. I mean, you're hungry, <laughs> but you could say, you know, oh, let me just, you know, do wudu first and maybe I'll pray before I eat or, you know, maybe I'll So would I'll you say recommend, sh- recommend sort of not to obviously go head on and argue, but to divert and perhaps... Indeed. I mean, there's, in the I mean we don't want to create a hostile environment at all. You know, and, we, the, you know, there is different opinions in different madhab and we need to tolerate that and accept that, that, okay, you're going to open your fast at this time, I'm going to open my fast at this time. Um, and there's no need to create a conflict, there's no need at all. Uh, however, if you're embarrassed to say, oh, do you know what, I, I need to open it a bit later, this or that, just go to the toilet, maybe do wudu or just say I want to pray, make an excuse, just before I want to read a little bit of Quran, uh, it's, it's not like you have to... Uh, delay or distract yourself for too long. It's only you know, mm. fifteen minutes. So I don't. I don't. There's no need for. Any it can sort be quite difficult though, because issues. I know in, I mean, in gatherings, I mean, parents can be quite. You know, obviously this is a young child, and you know, parents have their set ways. Or we've taught you, and you're doing something differently. And even in gatherings where with friends, they can be obviously understanding. And you know, when we have. Mm-hmm gatherings with them, Sunnis, and you know, it's it's never an issue. Everyone's, it's just like, yeah, we've just got a different time and Bismillah, exactly. you start eating. So yeah. it's mm-hmm. not, and they, often they will actually delay their, so we start eating. Exactly. But, and I know in some sort of group iftars that we've done, um, community, I went to one that was predominantly Sunnis, and I think I was the only Shia there. Um, and I was the last one to eat. Um, but if, again, I'm older and I can, and I'm, you know, I can make my way around. I'm quite confident. Yeah. The younger yeah. people, that can be quite difficult and daunting. And Those people at uni, for example. Yeah, yeah. I can understand. I can understand. It's intimidating. Everybody's breaking fast and they're looking and at them yeah. and saying, go on then, go on yeah. then, eat yeah. it then. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 alhamdulillah, shukran, brother. And they've got yeah. the banana and there, trying to, hang, trying to hang yeah. back, yeah. trying to hang back with it. Go, bismillah, brother, yeah. brother, please. Yeah. Please. Uh, <laughs> Practically. <laughs> in my uni days, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. It can be a little intimidating and, and you know. Well, at least uncomfortable. And then a little uncomfortable, but mm. you know, as Shia, we don't need to shy away from our beliefs. So we don't need to shy away from our practices. You know, it's, it's you can say, oh, you know, I used to say, oh, I, you know, I've got a couple of more minutes. Mm. You know, and then we're like, okay, no problem. So, what would you say That's to a young okay. person to give the reason? If perhaps somebody says, well, why is it like that? Why we're all Muslim? Eat. It's, it's time for. Sperm. Oh, okay, so in, in terms of, I mean, why do different months have? Yeah, yeah. different months have have different timings and different. Yeah. Um, so maybe different methodology for calculating. Is exactly, that correct? Are they calculate a work and out also the time? Different, different, uh, you know, methodology and, and, and different, um, you know, for example, so, uh, they say sunset. So when is sunset? Is it once the sun has seted, or is it when the sun is setting? When it starts to, you know, set mm-hmm. halfway through, what are the indications of that the sun has set? What is the indication of time? Mm-hmm. I mean, Masha, today, in today's day and age, we have, you know, Greenwich time medium where we can give you a specific, you know, timing. Calculated. At, calculated that at this time the sun would set. And sometimes at the art, you give it a couple of more minutes, uh, one or two minutes extra. Um, you know, according to the Shia, we always say when the redness has left, uh, you know, the sky and it's on, on the one side. Mm. Um, I'm trying to think now, rising east. So yeah, when the red is on the western side, so th- the redness is all around and it slowly starts to creep towards the west. And when the red- redness is all in the west, that's the time of Maghrib. That's the time you can open your fast. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the others may say no, it's when the redness is in the east. That's when you can, that's when the sun is uh, set. So quite nuanced. Quite so nuanced. yeah, so th- there's, there's different, like I said, method- methodology and different indicators of what time is Maghrib. And that, that's depending on what madhab you follow. And this is why we have a difference in time. You know, and, and if, you know, do you think that difference is a, is a positive, it's a benefit, or do you think it's, it causes division amongst us? I don't think it causes division, I don't think it's a benefit neither. I think it is there because people have different interpretations. Mm. If anything, it shows that our religion is open to interpretation, and our religion is a tolerant religion where we can tolerate, uh, respect, and we can you know, yeah. ac- uh, accommodate people having different opinions and, and different rulings in regards to Islam, it's perfectly fine. We're not, we don't have an Imam here at the moment. Until the Imam comes, may Allah hasten his reappearance, inshallah. inshallah. Until the Imam comes, we can't say what is 100%. Mm. Until the Imam comes. When he comes, then everything is 100%. We have no room for um, discrepancies. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame, I think, because, again, because we're a minority school of thought, and I know certain areas, they're predominantly Sunnis, and you may be the minority Shia, um, but it's important to feel that confidence, isn't it, in your faith that this is what my fiqh says. This indeed. is what, 
I mean, I mean uh, it's just like when I was growing up, and, and you know, I grew up, I was born in the 80s and I grew up in the 90s and two, early in what they call the noughties. But mm -hmm. um, Shia Islam was a, a, a dominant, mm -hmm. I mean, a, a predominant religion. People didn't know much about Shia mm -hmm. Islam. People thought, if you're a Muslim, you're a Muslim, that's it, in general, that's it. Mm -hmm. They didn't know the difference. Now kids as young as six, seven, eight know, you know, that there's Shia and Sunni. There's two types, you know. We don't I guess that has its pluses and its we're minuses. Not, we're not a, a religion or a group that is unknown and, you know, not familiar with the community here in England. They know who they we even are. Even if there are many misconceptions. Exactly, exactly. But it's taught in religious education. Country, Indeed. Whereas, like in you now, said, when we were GCSE, growing up, yeah. we weren't taught. They were, you were just a Muslim and, you yeah, know, exactly. the only time they knew about the Shias was... So, it's, uh, well, well, the point I was trying to get to yeah. was that we don't need to shy away. No. And we don't need to feel that... Oh, no, 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 I'm Shia, sorry. No, we don't have kids. So, yeah, I'm Shia. And this is what we do. This is our faith. We don't have to be, like, you know, proud as in, like, yeah, yeah, this is who we are, like, you know. Confrontational. Give, we don't be confrontational or, or condescending or anything like that. You're wrong and I'm right. Like, no, we just have to say, look, this is, this is the method, methodology I follow. And according to my Sheikh or, or my say, it's, it's this time. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to wait. Absolutely, it's absolutely fine. Do you have any tips and pointers? For those new to the religion of Islam, their first fast, yeah. second fast. I say, you know, enjoy the experience. Uh, definitely try to do it with the community. <laughs> don't, don't do it yourself. Get in so contact. the more involved you are. Yeah, get in contact better. with other Muslim brothers and sisters. And, and, you know, so you're all talking together. And because, and, and mashallah, in Ramadan, there's loads of events that are happening. So, you know, you, you can attend. There's Quran circles, Tafsir. Tajweed, mm. uh, Ihqam lessons. There's loads going mm. on in the community mm -hmm. for 30 days. You don't have to feel, uh, you know, don't have to be on oh, fasting by myself or on my own. No, get involved. They do iftar with the brothers and sisters in a group. It's a really nice communal, um, you know, holiday a period. You know, Any tips for period. the community with regards to those? Like the same question, uh, but be, maybe be very projected welcoming. at the community. Be, be, the community. For, the, for, for all Muslims that are fasting, you know, um, trying, you know, for the get, veterans, get, for the veterans, get, for the, the veterans as well. Uh, make sure you're, you're doing programs, holding events. It's 30 days. Uh, we have Laylatul Qadr, mashallah. We have a couple of birthdays, Imam Hassan's birthday. Mm -hmm. We have the istishad of uh, Imam Ali, alayhi salam, Amirul Mu'minin. Let's, let's get active. Let's, let's get uh, what, Ramadan. Everyone knows we're fasting. Let, let the public know. You know? Oh, yeah. Everyone knows. Oh, yeah. Most government what, what, buildings really and public sector. It's really good time to start sector. introducing Islam to people who don't know. You know? Or, you yeah. know, why not, why, not, why not invite non Muslims to come have iftar? Why not encourage all Muslims? You know what? Why don't you fast for one day to see what it's like? At the end, come to the mosque and and, and eat. And, that sounds and, uh, beautiful. That's yeah, a beautiful exactly. dawah. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Well, I think also there's um, what, what would your tip be for somebody who's not perhaps near a community, more isolated, maybe a Muslim, a sort of revert? How would, what would they do? Move. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean for those who aren't uh, that, that are quite distant, for, for whatever reason, uh, yeah. I, I know brothers who you know they. They're working because they work, yeah, they're, they're far from family yeah. this and that. It's like for that for a lot of um, Muslims in the US, a lot of because yeah. you know, America is such a big exactly. compared to the United exactly. Kingdom, it's such a big country, and some people exactly. are very isolated. So you know, the best thing is to try and find the community as close as you can. You know, and if you can make the journey, go for it. Yeah. If you can't, mashallah, most of our programs and stuff are online. Why not go and just you know make sure allocate some time. Go online and, and, and watch some lectures, specifically for Ramadan, some live lectures. Imam Hussein TV, we're here to help you from mm -hmm. before your Ramadan period. You know, watch the channel, we, we, we can help you and, and get you into that uh, <laughs> spiritual zone uh, to help you excel in your spirituality this Ramadan. And also, like you said in the previous point, that it's not necessarily about sharing your fast with Mus uh, Muslims. You could invite, you know, your colleagues, your, you know, whoever, yes. and join... You know the the celebration of opening your fast. Indeed, is a I, I remember watching on a famous celebrity, not mentioning names, Russell Brand. Uh, he came to this this communal um, iftar that we're having, you know, and he came to support the the charity and and, and what they were doing, and, and um, you know, it was really nice. Mm. And shall we have more of this? Absolutely, definitely open, even opening your centres locally and inviting yeah. non-Muslims and actually having definitely. a collective. There are actually um, initiatives in the UK um, where they are host their host centres host uh, for non-Muslims, but. Definitely to get involved. Isn't I it? agree. I agree. Making um, Islam real and relevant to the yeah. society that you're living in, and not just Any isolated. last pointers before we? Oh yes, yeah, so the last point is, um, you know, your try take your takeaway message. My takeaway message to, to the people, um, you know, for for the, for the whole all the Muslim Ummah, for the brothers and sisters, you know, take this is our this is our our month. 
you know, let's, let's get together, let's make it very, very spiritual, let's grow together as a community and get closer to the Imam of our time, get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a community. And let's not go empty handed, let's take, you know, our non-Muslim brothers and sisters with us and let them in, share with the experience. Uh, for, furthermore, for the, for the reverts, you know, if you find it difficult, you know, you can do taqlid of Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi and he'll allow you to open your fast early if you want, you know, if it's too long. Uh, if not, please get involved with your community, find out, you know, local brothers and sisters around. Um, do not be by yourself uh, mm -hmm. this Ramadan. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. Don't do it yourself because, uh, you know, it gets boring, it gets lonely. It gets tough. Get, yeah, indeed. So, you know, find your local centres, uh, call up your brothers and sisters and, and get together, have like local meets. Uh, you know, a group of stars and things like that. Really get involved and, and grow together as a community, inshallah. Thank you so much. I'm sure you have a blessed very day. Nice, very nice. I will nice, do my best. Nice. Thank you so much. It's very interesting. Thank you for having me. Good thank you, thank there. you. Um, inshallah, our viewers have a blessed um, suhoor and a blessed day. Enjoy your fast.